what causes Welcome. brain fog and what can we actually do to fix it? We're gonna talk about that today and so much more, so stay tuned. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. This is the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. And today I have my friend and returning guest, Ian Mitchell on to talk to you about all things C60 and quantum health technology. Now, trust me, when I was introduced to the world of some of these quantum tools that Ian and I are gonna talk about, I was really skeptical and just pretty much wrote them off. But after meeting Ian and talking with him and actually understanding how this technology works and the science behind it, I'm a lot less skeptical and actually quite a believer. So I'm gonna link everything in the show notes that Ian and I talk about today. I actually had brought him on to talk specifically about C60 because it's something that's been helping me tremendously since I'm missing out on a little bit more sleep these days. But as always with Ian, we ended up talking about a whole range of other topics. He is one of the world's top biochemists in the field of quantum physics. So I really trust what he has to say, especially about these different topics. His information is also gonna be down in the show notes if you wanna follow him and some of his work as well. I hope to hear more from him and I will definitely, definitely be having him back on the show for future conversations. There are detailed timestamps down in the show notes for you as well. So you can navigate through this conversation, skip to any topics that you find interesting. So make sure you check those out. And those are gonna be brought to you by my two sponsors today. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. Now Viva Rays is my go-to for protecting my circadian rhythms. In this conversation and in all of my conversations, we always mention the importance of keeping your circadian rhythms intact when it comes to your overall health. And you could use my code YOGI to save 15% over at Viva Rays. They have absolutely amazing circadian glasses. You can even send your prescription in and have your glasses custom made by Viva Rays. Again, their information down in the show notes and my code Yogi will save you 15%. The second sponsor is Upgraded Formulas, my go-to source for understanding the mineral balance in the body. Always recommend getting a consultation with that hair tissue mineral analysis. A blood test is only gonna show you what's happening right now, kind of an acute emergency situation. A hair tissue mineral analysis with a consultation will show you what's been going on in your body over the last 60 to 90 days. So if you have any kind of lurking or nagging symptoms, this is a great test to do. You can use my code YOGI12 or YOGI if you've already used that one before. And let's go ahead and jump into today's episode with Ian. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm really excited to have a repeat guest here with me today, Ian Mitchell. Now, he wears many, many hats. <laughs> we were just talking before we turn on the camera. So we're going to discuss a lot of things today. We're going to talk about C60. We're going to talk about some cool experiments he's been doing with Leela Q and even his uh, wizard water. So welcome back, Ian. Thanks, Sarah. Happy to be here. Yeah, happy to have you. And uh, so, like, where the heck do we even start? What what sounds the most exciting to you to talk about right now? Um, well, okay, maybe we ought to segue from from the last time I was here, and we yep. were talking about quantum. Um, yes. So one of the uh, one of the new experiments that I've been doing, and, th and this one is, it's very cool. We haven't we haven't publicly released it yet, so this this will probably be the first time a lot of people are hearing about it. But I, I don't think anyone will mind me talking about it. So it's it's kind of strange. So We've been looking at the the new um, quantum upgrade program that we're doing at Leela, and so as part of that, uh, we wanted to verify and prove out that yeah, yes, in fact, the quantum upgrade is working. So how we did it, it was kind of an interesting experiment we devised to kind of double blind everything. So I I'm the only person who actually knows what is what, but we take cells at the university, and we'll set up different plates and and put cells on the plates. And then I will take a picture of just three of the six, and then I'll send those to Philip and Roman Hafner in Germany, and they will charge using the quantum upgrade program just three of the plates. Now they don't know how they're numbered, and the uh, the professor at the university doesn't know how they're numbered. So I'm the only one who actually has the data knowing which is which. So it's truly double blinded. 
and then we'll put all of the the trays in the incubator and grow them and then we'll take them out and use a substance called cell titer glow and actually look at it's kind of a luciferase thing where it glows under different circumstances and in this case it's when there's an atp release so we'll, before we actually have them charged we we run the assay and see what they are and then we do it at half an hour one hour two hours four hours eight hours and 24 hours and what has been remarkable to me, and, and, and again, it's kind of funny to me because I'm the guy doing the experiment, but when I get the data, I, it still kind of floors me. 100% of the time, the ATP levels on the charged cells jump. And they, wow. they've gone from either at level with the other cells to above or even from below the level to above the level of cellular output. And it always happens within the two hour mark. And then they go up and then they kind of normalize back out over the span of a day. But there, there's such a pronounced jump that it's 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 not a it's not a statistical aberration. It's very consistent. And we've done the experiment repeatedly because I it, it was such a strange result that I insisted that we do it multiple times just to just to really, truly bet it and make sure that, you know, we we had a solid data set. But it's it's really amazing. I mean, we, you know, from 10,000 miles away, the cellular output of the ATP is being markedly shifted and 100% efficacious. I mean, it just every single time, it, which is, I don't know, it's, it's, we've just really kind of started to push into the new bounds of quantum biology, which is great for me because I love that. Um, because, you know, the cool part about science isn't just doing what everybody else has done and mm -hmm. wrote memorization. It's kind of nudging forward and pushing the bounds and a lot of times that means you you get results where you're like this is amazing how does it work well, we don't know yeah. you know and, and that's <laughs> yeah. really that's kind of where we're at with this is it's amazing and it works and it's repeatable but we don't have the exact mechanism you know and and i don't as i always joke with the guys i don't have a quantumometer so i can't right can't actually measure the quantum energy. So I have to measure all these peripheral effects, you know, like the secondary and tertiary effects of like ATP and blood clotting and things like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, they look at something like the Leela Q product, which you're the kind of the scientific officer for that company. Um, you do mm -hmm. a lot of the scientific advisory work there and they're like, oh, what's that going to do? You know, cause I did this, I did this cheeky little post on my Insta. It wasn't cheeky, but it was just a fun little post on my Instagram showing the things that I brought to the hospital that were like super weird, like a, <laughs> a wand, to, like the nurses are like, what in the heck even is this? You know, I brought my little water structuring wand. I brought my Leela Q quantum block to go in the hospital room. Of course, a collection of blue blockers and, you know, just a bunch of stuff that people were just like, what in the world, you know? Um, but I literally had, <laughs> when we were getting to the hospital to have my son, it was a like really quick delivery. It's a miracle we even got to the hospital. Um, but <laughs> I brought my block out of the bag um, right before I uh, gave birth. And then I had it in the room with me during the hospital, the whole time we stayed there. And I only had to stay for 24 hours because it was a hospital I chose that had that policy. Um, but still, I felt, I mean, being in a hospital is just kind of this draining experience for so many reasons, the non-native EMFs, the lighting, you know, just not a healthy environment, which is pretty ironic. Um, and that Truly. I really did feel, <laughs> I really did feel like the block helped um, yeah, during that process. I mean, it, it very definitively does. And that's, that's the thing that's interesting is, I mean, we can prove it in, in, you know, blood tests and serum analyses and cell cultures and things like that. So we know that it works. It's just, I think the, the more sort of ephemeral thing that you really can't peg down is the vibe, right? And, you know, right. when you're giving birth, you want the vibe to be kind of wonderful, not sterile with weird lighting and lots of, as you said, non-native EMFs that are dysregulating things. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure they probably looked at you and were like, what the hell? But I, I think yep. it's great, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of a uh, like a, a hospital that was, it was almost an hour away from my house. That's why we almost didn't make it. But I chose that mm -hmm. one because it was a compromise between home birth and hospital birth, but uh, they will allow me to leave in 24 hours, didn't make me get an IV, didn't push drugs on me. I was going to have a water birth, but we didn't have time. Um, so they're used to moms being like super weird, but I think I took like the weirdness level up a notch just to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I completely get that. Anytime you start talking about anything quantum and affecting things on a quantum level, and and I do actually appreciate, 
you know, how people kind of look at that with a degree of kind of uh, scorn typically. Yes. And, you know, yes. And, uh, scorn is a good word. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they really do because it sounds just like some buzzword that people, and, and for the most part, it really is kind of a buzzword that marketing people use. And that's why mm -hmm. we're really kind of hell bent on making sure that everything is documented, tested. You know, we've got a, a ton of data from the BASA Institute. I'm doing a lot of data at the university where I do work and you know, it's uh, it's really important, I think, to vet out those things. There's there's another product that I'm working with that we've been devising ways to to experiment, uh, to conduct experiments so that we can uh, show the validity of of the quantum effects on the brain. And to do that, you're, I'm using you know 19 channel EEGs and things like that, so we can actually show that th the states that are elicited from the compounds are the state same states that are being elicited from the quantum behaviors that are entrained in different objects and and that's you know that's important right because you can look at different neural neural evoked potentials and and things to see correlations between what happens in a person person's brainwave states and their their energetics there with their with the actual substance and then what transpires when they use something that's you know quantumly entangled to it and you're trying to pick up just the frequency so and and i, I just think it's important to do that because you've got to keep it honest otherwise it just becomes one of these buzzwords where everybody starts bandying about quantum and they really, you know, it's not legitimately doing anything. Right. Exactly. And I'm super cautious about that. I mean, when I say that I'm a do quantum health coaching, people are kind of like looking at me out of the side of one eye and I'm like, no, <laughs> it's, it's legitimate stuff. I'm going to tell you to do these little small things that are going to cause a huge, huge difference for you and implement things like maybe a Leela quantum block, or um, even just getting sun exposure, doing red light therapy, little things like that, and not even having to do them for hours a day quantum is a small, small little thing you're doing for a large effect, right? Well, one of the things that I always tell people, and this kind of drives it home, I mean, we really are sort of on the forefront of a lot of new technologies, and we're just breaking into it. And it, it always, the analogy I use is this is kind of like the, the landscape scientifically before, you know, pre von Leeuwenhoek, the guy who developed the microscope, you know, mm. if, if somebody back then had said, no, your disease and your illness, they're all caused by these little bugs that you can't see and they're, they're floating around your body, they would have been lambasted as being just a complete nutter. And, you know, but then you, then you develop the technologies and the tools based on a hypothesis that you're trying to vet out and you, you arrive at something. And, and that's really where we are. We're kind of in that crux where we're, we're just starting to move towards the point where we have enough data saying, yes, this is working in this capacity. So what do we have to find? And frankly, the, the downside with the, the quantum things is I don't actually know that we're ever going to be able to come up with devices. Maybe we will, you know, maybe in a, a hundred or a thousand years, but I, I really think just because of the nature of what we are in terms of an entity, I don't know that we'll actually be able to, to do something as refined as the things, you know, with which we're actually constructed. You know, it's kind of like the hundred part machine trying to assess the million part machine. It's very difficult to make an assessment of something that fine when we are in fact kind of inherently sort of a, a gross in the sense of the macro scale, sort of a gross creature. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and so for something like a quantum block, I guess people might want to know, uh, and then maybe we can talk about your water there. <laughs> uh, oh, sure. Sorry. Sl why, oh, no, it's, it no, it's okay. I got mine too. I'll be drinking it out here also. Um, not wizard water, just uh, my own little <laughs> special concoction. But, you know, wh why in, in scientific late terms that my people can understand, why do you think that having that block with me at the hospital was something that was was helpful or could be helpful? Uh, because everything functions with field effects, right? So at our core, we're vibrating strings of energy and consciousness, or at least that's you know my assessment of things. And 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 it's being very very much proven uh, with the data sets that we're getting. But but again, it's I'm I'm making a few jumps in in the steps of the logic. So I would say that at our essence, we are consciousness and then the epiphenomenon of that consciousness is our physicality and so all of those things are based on uh forms aggregating and coalescing you know like if you try and touch something you're not actually touching it it's electron mm -hmm. cloud repulsion so the electron cloud in this hand is pushing off of the electron cloud in this hand and those electron clouds they're you know if you get below the subatomic level they're all coalesced vibrating patterns of energy 
And what happens when you take a quantum block is it modulates the field. Think of it as kind of throwing a stone uh, into a pond and it propagates a ripple. And if you're right in the water next to where that ripple's propagating, it washes over you and impacts you. And that's kind of the same idea of why bring something that's emitting a static field that's a beneficial field into your environment, into your, into your local environment is a, is a great benefit to you. Got it. Yeah, so we keep the we keep the block downstairs, and I actually just for myself bought a uh, a little travel block for upstairs that we keep in the oh, yeah. bedroom. Yeah, yeah, which I, I love. have one of those as well. They're great. So, yeah. and you know, a lot of people look at me, but you know, kind of like, All right, what are you doing? But I keep them <laughs> at the lab. I bring them to the university. I have one at my house. Yeah, yeah, I'm you know I'm kind of hell bent on using it. Well, and and it's I've seen the data. So you know, despite the fact that it seems weird, I, I don't really care. You know, I mean it. I'm sure it does seem weird, but it works. Yeah. And what's the most compelling piece of data that you've seen on those technology? I actually, I still think the uh, the dark field microscopy showing the blood work, the effects on EMFs, um, where you can see how dysregulated people's blood cells get. Yeah. It, but just because it's so very visual, right? Mm -hmm. Probably the most compelling to me is the ATP stuff, but that's because I'm actually in the university pulling the data, looking at everything and seeing it firsthand. But really, I think for the average person, it's it's looking at the blood and going, holy cow, you know, th this is obviously messed up, dysregulated. You know, it's forming the little coin rolls where all of the platelets, mm -hmm. you know, coagulate and group together. And that's not how they're supposed to be. And then you put on a, you know, put a quantum block in proximity or put on a quantum jacket or something like that. And they all disperse and start flowing properly. Just looking at the real-time blood work of that is compelling. I think, you know, we've got all that stuff up on the website. You can peek at it. Yep. Yeah, and it's, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's and I mean, you can do the same thing with, with grounding too, right? Like it's, it's been, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's one of the things that's critical is people don't really think of like, like grounding to a lot of people seems mm -hmm. kind of fringe and silly, but it's stupid. It's, yeah. Yeah. But it's absolutely real because we're built in kind of in this environment, our, our entire biological system evolved in an environment where we're bounded between positive and negative fields. And, you know, we're sort of the intermediary and those things flow through us all the time. So if we can dissipate a buildup of detrimental uh, energies in our body and, and ionically move things into the ground, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. Most, actually, most of your blood doesn't really it's not the idea that your heart is really so much of a pump as it yeah. is more of a valve, right? Because to, to actually create the amount of static pressure you'd need to get all of your blood to move the way it does through all of the microvasculature, it would have to have a much larger organ pumping it. But a lot of the movement is really based on ionic flows. You know, the same thing if you, if one of the things I used to have my students read was um, Gerald Pollack's book, The Fourth Phase of Water, because yeah. it's, it's really pivotal because it shows that, um, a lot of the things that we see, like when somebody gets a sprained ankle and it instantly swells, well, you can't get lymph to perfuse there that quickly unless right. it's an ionic function. And that's, you know, that's why a, a lot of those things are like that, you know, when you're dealing with kind of aqueous solutions, just like blood. Yeah, agree. Yeah, I, I had uh, Dr. Pollock on my podcast a few months ago, and uh, I just, the more I learn about structured water inside the body and, and easy mm -hmm. water, the more I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't know anything. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those topics that you're like, whoa. <laughs> well, Why you know, is no one I talking think, about this? Well, it's you know, Gerald Pollack made a made a point about this, and I was kind of a big fan of his approach to this. Is it, people assume because we're always around water that we really understand it, and kind of one of my basic tenets anytime I would teach, and and certainly anytime I'm doing research is. The, the real obstacle to knowledge isn't so much um, not being able to find or figure something out. It's thinking that you already have, right? It's the assumption that you already have knowledge. You, you don't create a void to fill. You, you fill the space so there isn't a way to put new thought into that, that zone. So if you kind of eliminate that and keep yourself as sort of an open vessel and go, well, this is what I think, but maybe that's not the entire picture. It makes it much easier to kind of shift the rapidity with which you pick up new knowledge and and acquire different constructs and that, that's one of the things i love like actually with with water on the the note yep. the stuff that i'm sucking down right now normally water has eight parts per million oxygen so i've shifted the water that actually we all drink in the laboratory here so that it has a hundred parts per million oxygen 
And wow. so it's, yeah, that's our, our handy wizard water that we all drink in the lab. Wow. And, and it's great because it shifts your VO2 max. And it instantly, when you drink it, your pulse, if you're wearing a pulse oximeter, your pulse ox either goes to 100 or your pulse rate drops because it decreases the load on your heart. So that your cardiovascular system gets a big break because suddenly you're replete with oxygen. So it's, it, and it's wow. great. I mean, I, I drink it all the time because it makes thought a whole lot easier. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, like I said, a huge water nerd. We just got a big water system installed in our kitchen. And so I'm always, and I'm always putting intention into everyone's water and then I'll put it in the quantum block. And, you know, I just, I'm finding new and interesting ways to make my husband scratch his head on a daily basis. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you know, if if you look at like the Emoto Institute and the stuff that they're doing, Mm -hmm. I mean, their, their research is always very cool to look at. Um, and I think they're, they're doing some kind of nifty things, but that's one of the things, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I think around the lab here, I'm always doing things to make all the guys that work with me scratch their head going, what do you want? You know, because we're we're constantly welding up new pressure vessels and containment systems and vortexes and all sorts of different stuff. I mean, the the process to get this stuff is kind of ridiculous. And in fact, actually, in the process of coming up with it, I actually blew up my old lab. I literally blew (laughs) up. <clears throat> Truly. Yeah, I, I literally did. Yeah, I, I blew up the wall and the ceiling. And yeah, we had a, a catastrophic failure um, in a pressure vessel system. And yeah, it was it was not the most warm and fuzzy thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a, a mad scientist just a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, you know, we jokingly we actually have t shirts that you know, we jokingly have, to have safety third on them. So, um, you know, it's, <laughs> and people, people always ask, you know, well, why is safety third? And I said, well, kindness is first and innovation is second. And then, you know, in truth, safety is not, and if you want to get really innovative stuff happening, you, you have a real, a bunch of really bright people who are very driven and you put them in a place and you, you kind of throw caution to the wind and you do some cool stuff. And, and actually the process that we ended up with in order to stabilize both I, oxygen and hydrogen um, in water and, and keep the, the PPM up in a very stable fashion and overcome the zeta potential, which is a whole nother technical hoopla. Um, it, it was a trick, actually. It took a little bit of, it took a little bit of finagling and uh, one big explosion. But at the end of the day, you know, we figured it out. So what, how does this, cause this water that I have, it's uh, the spring aqua system. It's uh, got high, it's got a hydrogen little valve that you pull down to have hydrogen mm-hmm. water. The other valve is structured with minerals in it and purified. Um, so what's the difference between like something that you could get out of like a spring aqua system and your wizard water? I know it's got the, um, yes, just so, tell me. <laughs> okay. So the, well, the basics, so the, the first round we're doing with the hyper oxygenated water, another version is going to be the hyper hydrogenated version. So where mm-hmm. we put, you know, extra hydrogen in it because they're, they're, I, I can think of probably over 800 different studies Oh yeah, with you reviewed on on yeah. On That's why I hydrogen. bought this system because I was yeah. like, no, it's, I'm sold. It's I'm legitimate. totally sold on hydrogen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as am I. So it's just it's difficult to stabilize. You know, there are a couple mm-hmm. of different products that I've seen that that I really like. One of my friends, um, Luke Story, drinks this mm-hmm. hydrogen water stuff like it's going out of style every day, and and it's great. You know, I I actually I love it but it's very difficult to stabilize. It's kind of why mm-hmm. when you pop those open, you have to drink them really quickly. Fast, yeah. Yeah, because the hydrogen you know, dissipates really rapidly mm-hmm. through the water and out into the atmosphere just because of the shift in pressure. And so stabilizing that was kind of a trick. So really the, the big difference between what you're drinking and what we're doing here in the lab is just the stability factor. Um, Got it. And, that, and that's really it. So, and Got also the, the amount, because normally, Kind of the the uh, the parts per million of molecular hydrogen that you'd be able to get in your stuff mm-hmm. um, would be a fraction of what we're doing. So the the peak that I hit with the oxygen was 228 ppm, which is wow. you know com- compared to eight ppm, pretty radical. Yeah. Um, we actually dialed it back because when you drink that, you get a little bit of a buzz really oh. quickly. Um, yeah, and that's that wasn't really the intent. The intent was to have clarity and sharp focus and a lot of added energy and, and shift your VO2 max, not not to kind of go, woo, 
you know, so. since I don't drink, I might want to try some of that. <laughs> it's been yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll send you some. It's actually, it's yeah, I don't drink either, but it, it's it's pretty cool stuff, and it really does. It feels great, and especially if you're doing exercise. Mm. That's the that's the time you can actually see it the most, is because it decreases the load on your cardiovascular system so much that your output can just go through the roof, and you don't feel it, you know, because you you just have all of the resources that you need. And it's, it's cool because there's kind of an, an interesting cycle time too. So when you first take it, you get a bunch of perfusion just because of the, the micronized bubbles esophageally. And so your rates go up in your pulse ox as everything is going down and then it dips down a little bit. And then when it kind of hits your stomach and starts to move through your GI tract and then gets into your bloodstream, the rates go back up. So you get this instant spike up to a hundred, then it dips down a little bit and then it goes back to a hundred. And it stays there for 20 or 30 minutes, which is really very, very cool. And, it, and you can feel it. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Like, the difference between having it and not having it is pronounced enough that you feel it. Wow. And I wouldn't recommend, you know, like drinking a gallon of it because you you become bubbly. You know, it's, oh, yeah. 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 Do you have any like, because um, when we got this system, my husband was like, because he wasn't drinking structured water. I was like manually structuring all the water and doing my thing to it. And so this is his first time really doing any kind of structured water. And he's like peeing a lot the first like few days. He's like, I don't want this water anymore. It's making me pee too much. And I'm like, I think it's because it's kind of displacing. It's, it is <laughs> probably detoxifying the system. So exactly. you know, really, when you have structured water and you, and you take that into your system, it's far easier because really the, the water that your body is using is the stuff that's produced through your mitochondria, right? right? So you consume the water, then it's broken down, runs through your mitochondria and actually becomes the usable water that you can ingest, um, which is why deuterium is such a big issue. Yes. You know, but that's, you know, that's something we can address at a later date because uh, the the next iteration- no, you were of, talking about doing deuterium depleted water and affordable. Yeah, water. and I that's that's gonna, gonna probably be the, the second iteration of this is, is our new process for deuterium depletion, which I think will probably come to market in August or something like that. Oh, but it'll just, fabulous. yeah, it'll be at the price of normal water instead wow. of- <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of people call. I've still got two cases of uh, five PPM light water in my basement that I kept from, I did a deuterium depleted water before pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I have two cases of that. It was amazing energy. I felt so good doing it, but I'm like, not yeah, during pregnancy, probably not good during breastfeeding. No, <laughs> babies well, and, need deuterium. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's what I was going to say is, yeah, they definitely do. And, and that's the thing is you, it's, you know, it's kind of a basic thing. You have to mm -hmm. put it where it appropriately belongs. So we, you know, people of our age don't really want it, but little kidlets definitely need it to, you know force the growth rates a little bit. So yeah, exactly. it's, I think that'll be coming probably in August, but this we'll, we'll probably launch this at least for people that have subscriptions just to, to test it out and get some feedback here in the next month or so. I'm kind of, I'm yeah. excited about it. I just I'm think it's in. such a Send useful me some. thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. Just let me cool. know what you think. I will. Alexis loves the hydrogen water too. I mean, she, before when we got the system, she would only drink water if I put a tablet in it, or if I stirred it to structure it, you know, like she, or put it under the quantum block. She kind of saw all my rituals. And so she only wants like structured water, hydrogen, like she's very particular about her water now. I think she just kind of intuitively knows. So um, she's my little litmus test on everything. Like, let's see how yeah, she thinks. I think that's important. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, the structuring, that's, that's one of the things is after we hyper it, we restructure it and then, you know, bottle it and or can it. And that's, uh, yeah, that stuff is all critical. It's kind of funny that people haven't really snapped to mm -hmm. yet. I mean, a lot of people, especially people in health and wellness, we all, we're all kind of manic, literally almost everybody I know is kind of manic about making about sure their water. That, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I totally am now it used to be diet now I'm like the water it's the water <laughs> yeah well it, well it is right but I mean you know if yeah. you had Gerald Pollack on you know by yeah. molecular count we're more than 99% water molecules exactly so it's probably important to make sure that that 99% is legit and good and beneficial so yeah exactly yeah so got the water topic and I'm gonna be trying that out um 
one other thing I brought to the hospital with me that people thought was like, what is that little bottle she's bringing with her was the C60 because I actually started using it during pregnancy. You know, when you're kind of like, they call it like pregnancy brain, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're just not really all there and as sharp as you'd like to be. Um, And then let's talk about postpartum, how that's like 10 times worse. Uh, (laughs) The C60 has been coming in clutch for me, seriously. Yeah, it really is actually, especially postpartum. That's I think the neural formula is the one I'm using and I just, I can't go without it. (laughs) Well, so that's kind of an interesting thing. So that's all the carbon 60 and, and the, you know, so the carbon 60 is just 60 carbon atoms clustered together in a soccer ball. And then I bind it to a lipid so that it can actually be taken into the cells through the cell membranes. And so what happens there is you get this huge uptick. So with the neural formula, it's bound to caprylic acid, right? Which is the, the C8, the uh, octanoic acid. It's the, the, the carbon eight chain of a medium chain triglyceride. So when you ingest that, it breaks down and goes directly to your liver, forms ketone bodies, and those ketone bodies translocate to your brain. And because they, your brain can actually use ketones as fuel. And so it was kind of a handy delivery method to get the nanoparticles to, to move to the brain. And so what happens is they go to the brain, they go into the cells there and they end up in the mitochondrial membrane and they buffer oxidative stress. So the, the outcropping of that is without actually adding anything in like NMN or any other NAD precursor, you get a boost of about 18 to 58.3% ATP output, which is huge. And then, you know, so that's that's right out of the gate, just knocking out oxidative stress load in the electron transport chain. Then the the second thing I did was to add in NMN and resveratrol mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of take this balanced approach to putting an NAD precursor. And my, my favorite one is NMN. I think it actually works the best. And so when that goes in, then you're actually upregulating another one of the complexes in the electron transport chain. And then it's got CoQ10, uh, PQQ. Mm-hmm. And so all of those things, I was trying to isolate the different points on the electron transport chain to upregulate everything. So I was using the C60 to block system loss and then the NAD precursors to upregulate and, and also the, the coenzymes to do the same thing. And so you end up with a much more robust energy profile. So your, your brain suddenly has a surplus of energy. And then I put in enzymes, proteolytic enzymes specifically that would pass the blood brain barrier to go in and kind of nibble out little proteins and plaques like tau proteins and beta amyloid plaques that build up over time. So just mm-hmm. through, throughout, throughout everybody's lifetime, you're going to aggregate plaques and proteins in your brain and those kind of dull performance. So when you get a little boost in there so that your glymphatic system, which is the, the subset of the lymphatic system that's tasked with cleaning your brain using interstitial fluid and cerebrospinal fluid at night while you sleep, gets a little bit of an additional kind of boost because when the, when the proteins and the plaques are stuck together, they literally are very sticky. And so your glymphatic system is just using pressure to wash things. But if the particles are broken apart and smaller and free floating, uh, it's a, a more easily perfused out and gets into your lymph system and can be excreted. So you're literally making it easier to clean your brain. And mm. so over time, the more you do that, the more effectively things function because you have fewer plaques built up in your brain. And so mm-hmm. the, the combination of all of those things it makes the, the energy profile that you have, you know, neuronal potential for just much more robust. And so you're able to think more clearly and mm-hmm. your mood seems stabilized. And I, I gave it to my youngest son when he was kind of hitting the grumbly teen years um, because it, it, it made a huge difference, you know, because the, the way the, the brain forms and, you know, in people kind of those years are a little strange morphologically mm-hmm. there are a lot of changes and things shift and and it's a little weird but i i noticed that when he would have the extra energy it was very balanced and it helped a lot and you know myself you know just because of the kind of the strenuous stuff that i try and keep myself doing mentally um it, it makes a difference you know substantial mm-hmm. difference I, I mean really with that i i developed it for people specifically with alzheimer's that was the intent yes. of that um, was to do that, you know, to, to benefit those guys and, and help that and negate it. Um, but if you don't have some massive cognitive deficit, then, you know, the outcroppings of all those things grouped together is this just really ridiculous energetic profile in your noggin. And you can just hum through stuff. I mean, you, you know, it, you felt mm-hmm. it. That's, oh, yeah. it's, it's very different. You know, that's why I do it every day. 
is yeah. sort of scratching my own itch. Yeah, I mean, well, we're going through this uh, fun little thing. My son's developing, I think, ahead of babies his age. And, and so he's he's about three and a half months, but we're going through the thing I think is called the four-month sleep regression. So that entails a lot of waking up. And then sometimes we don't want to go back to sleep. We just want to talk and it's real cute. But I'm also 43, so <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Oh, so the first thing I do in the mornings when I do get up is, you know, obviously my sunlight routine, my hydration routine, but then pop some C60, the neural formula. And I can yeah. literally feel after I take that, like, okay, I'm not going to totally crash and die today. And I'm not drinking caffeine either. I'm staying away yeah. from that. Yeah. Also. Question for you. Are you taking the, uh, the Olympic formula as well? I'm not, I've just been taking the neural formula. Okay. Do you think you I need should... the Olympic? Yeah, I will send you some of the Olympic. You should definitely okay. take that as well. And the, and the rationale for that is your your body is an overall system, right? So mm -hmm. even if you're upregulating the energetics in your brain, if your body is depleted, then mm -hmm. you're going to lose some of that benefit because you, you, physically you're always trying to reach a kind of a the the most effective homeostasis. And so some of those some of those particles are going to be moved elsewhere and shuttled to the areas where you need them. But if mm. you take the Olympic, that was actually designed to go through the rest of your system. So it's so my back that's killing me. <laughs> yeah. And, and it also, it decreases the cytokine response pretty profoundly. Mm. So it'll take a lot of swelling and things out systemically. So it's, it's actually, oh, nice. it's phenomenally good for people with arthritis. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, I, I made it for athletes to, to really bump them forward. Like a lot of the, the top CrossFit athletes in the world are using it right now. Wow. With, with ridiculous results it's actually it's really cool to see the things those guys are doing because they're 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 so good with their metrics and tracking everything that you can see a, a profound shift when they weren't taking it to when they were taking it and, and get really clean differences in, in the output that they can do with their musculoskeletal system like just numbers that seem ridiculous to me but it's consistent Amazing. but you know for for the average person who isn't some you know super competitive athlete, athlete yeah you just yeah you've just got a lot a lot more energy and when systemic inflammatory responses drop you feel better everything just yeah. functions you know i mean i would never recommend you know people taking NSAIDs but it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh you know the all natural version of getting an NSAID consistently okay you know? so it just uh, yeah i definitely would recommend that and you can do neural and Olympic together, right? Yeah, I actually do them. And yeah, what I do is I do, and this is, I'm a much bigger guy than most people. So I do a tablespoon of Olympic and then two mm -hmm. teaspoons of neural. So okay. what is the wizard dose of Olympic? But again, I'm, you know, I'm probably twice as heavy as you are. So okay. I, you know, um, for you, I just say two teaspoons and one teaspoon or two teaspoons and two teaspoons. And that's plenty. Yeah. Okay. And it, you'll notice that. a difference. I actually, you know, follow up with me and let me know. I would be really curious to hear your feedback. I will. Yeah. I, I don't, I've kind of got away from taking a ton of supplements, uh, pre pregnancy. Cause I just was taking so many of them that I didn't feel like they were really doing any good. And I focused more on like grounding and sunlight and red light therapy and, you know, just the more natural aspects. But during pregnancy, I added the C60 back in, and then postpartum, I've been doing C60 and I've also been uh, microdosing, just microdosing a little bit of methylene blue also, just making sure I don't overdo that one and definitely not get pregnant again um, <laughs> while doing that. But that's been another one that's been helping also just I like, actually, not I, feeling. Yeah, I did methylene blue yesterday. So yeah. That's, yeah. It's yeah, a good I, modality. Both, both are very good. It will, C60 and methylene blue are both very good and potent electron donors and acceptors. So they, they work really well. I, I typically just do the C60, but yesterday I had a hankering. So I, I zinged myself and turned my tongue blue. So yeah, I, I, I've been zinging myself little bits here and there just with the sleep deprivation. I'm like, okay, how am I going <laughs> to function as a human being today? And that has been very helpful just to do a little dose, not, not a full dose. And if you're breastfeeding, do your own research and nothing on this podcast is medical advice, just throwing that out there too. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you specifically, what actually, what might be more beneficial just because of understanding what the, the kind of stress that you're under right now with mm -hmm. breastfeeding and everything that you're doing, you might want to split up the dose and do the, the, just do a teaspoon of the Olympic and the neural in the morning mm -hmm. together, and then do another teaspoon before bed. Oh, and, okay. 
Yeah, or maybe not right before bed, but you know, two hours or so Around before there. bed. That way, it'll just kind of knock out inflammatory response and give you a big boost of energy. Because while you're sleeping and you're doing the restorative regenerative cycles, mm -hmm. you your body, especially right now, since you're kind of you know being biological for two, um, <laughs> it, it could use the uh, it could use the break. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, for anybody who maybe isn't breastfeeding or, you know, doing a lot of the same stuff I'm doing, but they are under an extreme amount of stress, maybe just, you know, issues with their mitochondrial function, which is what happens when we are under an extreme amount of stress, how could C60 benefit them? Yeah, well, you know, C60 is great because it really does act literally right at the mitochondrial membrane. So that's mm -hmm. that's the heart of how it really helps is it upregulates your mitochondrial function. You know, that's and that's in fact why I've seen people go from, you know, not having a menstrual cycle to having mm -hmm. a menstrual cycle again um, is because the the boost in their mitochondrial function effectively kind of de-ages people. And you see that a lot with, um, you know, NMN, I've, you know, I've mm. spoken with David Sinclair a bunch and, you know, Dave said that he's had that happen with people as well. And I've seen it both in people and in animals and, you know, just from C60. So in, in the combination of those formulas where they have, you know, both of them have NMN and resveratrol in a, in a balanced formula, um, coupled with the C60, you, you really see some profound shifts. As a guy, one of the biggest shifts that, that I've noticed that's kind of strange when you couple those things together um, is when your mitochondrial health goes up for whatever reason, and I'm not really sure what the rationale is, uh, testosterone levels go up too. So uh -huh. free testosterone, I, and I've literally seen in the span of 30 days, people's testosterone jump about 300 points, uh, oh, which is... Okay a remarkable shift. I mean, as a guy, you feel it, you know, I mean, oh, as a woman, yeah. you, you definitely feel it too, but, mm -hmm. um, really from, from the standpoint of somebody who's, who's an older guy, you know, I'm in my fifties. So it's, you know, it's, it's good for me. The other thing about knocking out oxidative stress while you're upregulating mitochondria is you, uh, when you don't have all those, uh, those oxidative factors going on and peroxides and radicals, uh, you don't get gray which is kind of nice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, well, because yeah, graying out is usually a function of oxidative stress on your cells. Okay. And yeah, and so it's, it's so funny that people say, oh, it's copper, it's the but it's just overall oxidative stress, right? Well, I mean, it, think about, you know, if you wanted to take hair and, and bleach it, what would you do? Peroxide. peroxide. Yeah. yeah. And your body creates peroxides all the time. So Got it. it's this it's the same sort of function. And you know, I could be I I, I don't anything biologically, you can't just say it's one definitive thing. I mean, we are a really super com complex system. You know, I mean, I can look at a body and say, oh, well, we can affect that, you know, biologically with photonics, you know, you can do photobiomodulation, we can affect it with magnetics, we can do, you know, pimp therapies, we can affect it with stem cells, and we can do, you know, biochemical things. So we're so complicated, you know, I'm sure there is a factor of selenium and copper and, you right. know, dihydrotestosterone and, you know, conversions and all of that stuff. But yeah, at its root, I think there's, you know, really, I think it's just oxidation, at, at least that's my take, you know, and I, yeah. I think that could take some time. But I'm feeling pretty good. And, and all of this stuff really, you know, makes a big difference because I'm, I guess what, four months ago, I was in a really horrifically oh, yeah. bad motorcycle wreck. And, you know, I, I was able to rehab myself using all of these modalities very rapidly. You know, my femur literally ended up inside of my tibia. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was not the most fun thing ever, but yeah. um yeah, it was, you know, compared to what the prognosis was, the, the orthopedic surgeon said, well, you know, we're going to have to put you under general anesthesia and then we're going to have to rebuild your leg with pins and plates and screws and, you know, put in bone filler and all sorts of stuff. And I, I, it was bizarre to me to hear that. It really was kind of like being rapidly faced with the barbarism of where we are in terms of the technology of medicine. I, I actually had myself discharged the next day and bought a hospital bed and set it up at my lab and rehabbed myself over the next few weeks. Um, and I wow. did, you know, did it with stem cells, carbon 60, pulsed electromagnetic fields, lived with a quantum block next to me, you know, and, uh, but in, and made a, a remarkable recovery, right? I was told that, you know, it would be 12 weeks before I could put any weight on my leg whatsoever. 
and I was up and back on it at like the 11 day mark. And then uh, you're not, not yet. Well, not putting full weight on it by any right, means. Not but jogging, but <laughs> yeah, I was not jogging, but I, by the nine week mark, I had full clearance from my orthopedic surgeon. And, you know, he's, he actually, I, I went in and I was still in a wheelchair and he, he looked at my x-rays and said, you're in the chair for me, aren't you? And I said, yeah, kind of, <laughs> because I had already been walking. So I just didn't want to get busted for it. So, yeah. But it was, uh, it was kind of, yeah, I mean, to be able to put weight on my leg and walk at nine weeks was really good. And, you know, it's, uh, that's the thing is I used all of the different modalities that I understand for a physical system because it was, I think probably the single biggest mover there was pulsed electromagnetic fields. I used one of the mm -hmm. big coils from pulse centers and mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, that was kind of a remarkable benefit. And you could see it literally after a week. Uh, I went in at the seven day mark because my collarbone was just split in half. And then my femur had wedged inside of my tibia and, and actually split my tibia down six inches, kind of like a log splitter. Um, so it was a, it was a pretty brutal accident and I face planted at 65 miles an hour. So that was less than thrilling. Um, but yeah. you know, I went in a week later and I, I asked to have x-rays of my shoulder because I could already move my arm. <clears throat> And the orthopedic surgeon said, no, we don't need to do that. It's going to be at least three weeks and you're only at a week and there's no way there's any radiographic healing. You know, you're not going to be able to see any bone or anything. And I said, no, I'm reasonably certain because I had been doing literally, you know, multiple hours every day with a pulsed electromagnetic coil on my shoulder. Um, and so, you know, he said, well, we don't do that. And I said, look, I, you know, I'd really like it. So he, he went ahead and let me do the x-rays. And then he came back about 10 minutes later with his iPad and said, do you see this? This is new bone. And, you know, there was after a week, there was already new bone. And I, and I guarantee it was because of the pulsed electromagnetic fields. Cause I, I know from multiple studies that people have done and, and a lot of anecdotal data, just from friends of mine that have done that. Uh, with bone, bones that have been broken. Um, my, my friend Todd Shipman, whom mm -hmm. you're friends with, uh, yep. Todd's daughter had broken a bone and in the span of less less than two weeks had completely mended the bone with no trace of the, the fracture using PIMP therapies. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of data on that. Um, and it's, I mean, if you look for it, it's out there. And so the combination of that, and I did seven stem cell procedures in the first six weeks um, where I extracted my own B cells and then would activate them photonically and cryogenically and then re-inject them. Um, and, you know, that, that made a big difference, I think. And that coupled with the, the anti-inflammatory response from the carbon 60, all of those things stacked to basically accelerate the healing cycle. So, you know, I mean, it, it's been, I think this week actually makes 16 weeks since the accident and wow. you know, I'm, I'm out and about doing everything that I would normally do. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think a lot of it comes down to just health of the mitochondria as well. Um, and that's the biggest thing that I focus on when I'm helping people. And then just with myself also is looking at how does this affect my mitochondria, you know, and, and so many people are really into like, the detoxes, the parasite cleanses, you know, all these things. And I always say, if you're not, if your mitochondria is not healthy, if you're not supporting your redox function, don't do those things because they could really, really cause issues for you. Would you, would you say? I completely agree. One of the, one of the new formulas that will be coming out within a couple of months um, has urolithin A in it. And the, the rationale behind that was to upregulate the healthy mitochondria, but to trigger mitophagy mm. so that we could actually purge the mitochondria that are oh. damaged and replace them. Yeah. So the PQQ stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis. So the, the new formulation will have the, you know, the PQQ and the CoQ10, but also has urolithin A so that it, it wipes out via triggering mitophagy, wipes out the damaged mitochondria, then pushes the body to make new mitochondria that are healthy to replace it. Because I, I really do, I, I agree with you. I think it, your cellular health, if you start at the root and you cascade up with cellular health, then everything works more effectively. Yep. And I've even seen it, you know, my, my partner, Carrie Bennett and I were doing a fertility course and we've had out of our last cohort four pregnancies, you know, and then of course there was my pregnancy from kind of doing a lot of these things that, that support mitochondrial health. And we, you know, I think people get really hung up on the lab numbers, you know, my 
LH is this and my FSH is this. And, you know, we've seen just an understanding kind of the cellular hydration, a lot of Dr. Pollock's, Pollock's work, these hormones and these different systems kind of respond almost in this like resonance effect in the body so that maybe you don't see it go up on a lab, but boom, you're, you're pregnant or you feel better, you know, and, and eventually it does show up on the lab. But I, I feel like this kind of resonant effect can happen in the body um, kind of on the quantum scale before you actually see numbers on a lab. Do you ever see things like that happen? Yeah, I do. And that's, that's one of the things that we've been doing research on is you, you definitively see the effects on a, on a subtle level before they cascade up. That's why when you, when you shift cellular energetics and you change mitochondrial health, it cascades up and starts to build up in a positive effect. And so you can see, like in the case of the athletes, like the CrossFit athletes, that's why you're seeing extra strength, right? Is their, mm -hmm. their ATP levels are higher. So they actually have the capacity to put out more power and force. And there, there's also another function called super precipitation of skeletal muscle actomyosin, which is basically when you, when you super precipitate something, you, you trigger a higher firing potential with this, the sarcomeres, which are the little muscle fibers. And so normally your brain down regulates your body's firing capacity to 25 to 30% of its actual capacity. Like if you were having a fight or flight response and your life were in danger. Um, but if you super precipitate it, carbon 60 allows the, the, the electrical potentiation to move, uh, across the fibers and fire more. So you, that's the other effect, but really mm -hmm. the biggest effect is just because you have more robust energetics in your mitochondria. And also, yeah. you know, the, the formulas that I've been making for the, the carbon 60, both the Olympic and the neural, because they have pyroloquinoline quinone, you actually end up with more mitochondria at the end of the day. And the rationale for that was when you upregulate the energy potential too much, if you flow too many electrons across a membrane, you'll actually pop the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you don't want that. So if you're trying to get a higher energy potential out, rather than just upregulate a set number, if you increase the number, you can distribute the load across them and end up with more mitochondria. There, there's some other substances that do the same thing. Um, a couple of things uh, that are PPAR agonist and uh, some SARMs and things like that. Hmm. Um, like GW501516 was a really great one. Uh, SR9009 was another one. Um, those were kind of, I think, bypassed because there were some side effects with them that weren't so great. In the case of GW501516, which a lot of people think of as a SARM, but it's actually a, it's a partial peroxisome. It's a PPAR agonist. Um, that was it, it showing increased potential, uh, athletic, yeah, athletic potential, you know, muscular output of some, some ridiculous number, like 70% or something, wow. but yeah, carterine, I think was the, the other name, but the, the problem was it triggered cancerous growths. And there's actually a lot of people worry about NMN right now, because an article came out talking about NMN triggering. I've, uh, I, saw, I saw that. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and that's, that's actually that's been known for quite a long time because it, it's co-opting a certain gene. And, you know, anytime you're adding something that's cellular fuel, the things that want to have unregulated growth are of course going to grow, but it's very easy to block that. If you just use, uh, there are probably about 56 different compounds that can do it. And quinolones are one of those. So if you put in PQQ while you're taking NMN, you've negated the potential for that. So it's kind of a, that's one of the other kind of, peripheral reasons to have the, the PQQ in there is not just to trigger mitochondrial biogenesis, but to actually block the detrimental effects of some of the, the rapid growth and proliferation of cells that are typically unchecked. So yeah, whole, whole lots of different little layers to all of these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we got to wrap pretty soon, but one more question I had for you, you mentioned that, uh, C60 was an electron donor. I thought it was just a supporter of the electron transport chain, but it, it's actually electron donor. Yeah. It's a donor and acceptor. It will do both okay. depending on, depending on its conditions. Right. So, okay. the, and that's one of the things that makes it kind of interesting. So it's also as much as it's a tremendous antioxidant, it's also a pro oxidant. So mm -hmm. if you're uh, stimulating it with light, you can create just a huge pronounced pro oxidative effect. And there's a lot of output. And, and that actually is kind of a detrimental thing in a lot of ways, because it triggers uh, superoxide production. So it releases a thing called singlet oxygen. 
And so that's kind of the equivalent of uh, intracellularly if you released a lot of peroxide. And so mm -hmm. you can actually use it to lyse cell membranes and break down walls and things like that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you have to, you have to be kind of careful. Like you, you don't want to hit it with specific frequencies of light because under certain of em uh, emissive frequencies, it, you know, will rip things apart. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's contraindicated you... for animals with internal lighting. So. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I'm just kidding. That's, you know, yeah, my, my bioluminescence joke for the day. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you've got a lot of amazing stuff going on right now. You've got the water. When do you think that water is going to be out to market? I'm going to be trying it, but what do you think? Um, have I'll, I'll send you some so you can try it and just give me some okay. feedback probably within the month. I think what we'll do is oh, cool. we'll probably release it for people that have subscriptions first so we can get some feedback kind of from our tribe and, you know, uh, all the guys that are doing the wizard science and stuff because they, they, we have a, a pretty good group. You know, there are a lot of folks that are doing it consistently. So I'd like to kind of get some feedback internally and then make sure everything's dialed in and it's not, you know, too strong, not, you know, I, and my concern isn't, is not that it's too weak. It's actually that it might be too strong. So I just like to get some good feedback on that. And then, uh, and then we'll probably release it in the next maybe two months for everybody. Awesome. And then the deuterium depleted water, maybe this fall. Yeah, at some it should, point. should be. In, yeah, I'd say like Q3 probably would cool. be my guess. Maybe maybe August or just a hair later. Cool. We'll have to do another podcast then to talk yeah, that'd more be great. about it for sure. Because I've done a couple on deuterium depleted water and I just it's it's a fun topic to talk about. And so we'll definitely have to get together again and do that. Perfect. That sounds awesome. awesome. I look forward to it. Yeah, well, this has been really great. And I'm going to make sure I put all the information in the show notes, Leela Q, the all Wizard Sciences link, all of that in case people want to check these things out. But thank you so much for being here today, Ian. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. It was great talking to you. It's awesome.